Hey, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesday, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else that catches our eye. I'm Ben, and that's not Jill. Or is it? <laughs> oh, maybe it is. I don't know. You, mm. You'll never, you'll, uh, you'll never know. I don't know. This will be completely quite indistinguishable from uh, Jill. If it wasn't for the background, then yeah, right. Hundred yeah, percent. Not not enough glowing pink. I was going the walls, to say the walls are pink. They're not like bright enough pink. Two, though. possibly three RGB lights back there, and be like, oh, it's like staring. No. So um, yeah, man, have you been up to anything since uh, it, in in the two days since we've spoken? No, I have not. Oh no, no. I was going to go in like the like two plus years since you were last on it's been it hasn't been that long has it i don't know i don't there there, there was one in the summer i was on i think okay i'll take your word for it, it. yeah it's you know it's a, it's been a thing change jobs um I, I i guess yeah it's it's a little awkward saying this because if you go watch the other podcast that i'm on on this channel you have nine months of updates Th- this <laughs> is true but you know 100 percent somebody's like what other podcast? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, who is who is this person? Where yeah. where did they come from? So this is Jordan. This is my co-host. These guys started all this with, and uh, we've been doing Linux Emcast Weekly for about ten years. Yeah, and uh, you've uh, we we started in his parents' basement. Yes. Now he's in his own basement. Now I'm in. Now <laughs> I own the basement. Damn yes. it! It's the circle of life. So uh, uh. anything fun? We got Boba Fett. We were talking about that for we went live, and uh, yeah, uh, we 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 got the booby feats. Um, I I don't know. I I had I had some opinions about Wheel of Time, yeah. but that was that, that that was kind of it. I went and re- I went and read all the synopsis for all the books because yeah. I, I I could not be bothered to go and actually read the books now. I'm, I'm on like, book nine. Yeah, uh, reading the synopsis, I'm like, okay, yeah, this makes a lot more sense than the way the show has presented it. Mm. Like there, there, there's some, there's some crucial details here that seem to be missing that would have made me care. I guess Plus, maybe it, it, it just moves so slow. No, I, I've seen people with my take on it, and I've only watched the first three episodes, and I'm not hate watching it or anything like that. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I understand they got to make changes and all that, and I've seen yeah, people yeah. who have went back. You know, I went through most of the books. And they they're in love with the Wheel of Time. They're like, no, it's a faithful reopt up, and I think those people need help but uh, if you enjoy it or not you're kind of like eh on it i'm 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 a little lukewarm i'm, I'm i'll give season 2 a chance i started actually reading um uh, the wizard of earthsea series by ursula kayla Gwynn, uh, hmm. actually yesterday uh i bought those books in california when i was out for scale 2 years ago Ooh. and i finally I'm finally getting around to reading them they're very, they're very short though but like they're that they're that old style of book where like the 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 text is super dense and it's right to the edge of the page so huh yeah all right i i have a book in the house that's it i'm digital i carry it on tablets it's like ds9 up in this busy uh what have i been up to oh good news everyone if you've been following along even on the uh holidays even last friday we are doing Get Good Grandpa series. We're learning how to play Trackmania. Not the first one, not the new one, but the second one, because it's available on Steam. It's super cheap. As part of the sell right now, I think it's like five bucks. We got our own server set up, and uh, we're doing practicing during the week. And Fridays, we're testing our progress on new sets of tracks. All the tracks for this Friday are currently loaded in the server. If you want those details, go into Discord, go to the announcement segment, and uh, that'll give you a little password to pop in. It's running 24-7. And I will be there at 7.30 to win. I'm playing to win, kids. Um, <laughs> see how I do. I have, I have brief moments of competence. It's awesome. And then I go flying off the track like everybody you, else. You also have the root password for the MySQL database that has all the time. So, Man, I you know what? After I got that set up, and because that thing was so old, it couldn't even uh, populate its own uh, tables. Ooh. Yeah. So I, I was like, all right, where's caps lock? Boom. <laughs> and uh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man let's uh let, let's let's write some create table statements it, oh boy yeah i only had to google once so uh yeah i'll see everyone there friday we had a couple people show up even on uh christmas eve so it'll mm-hmm. be interesting to see who pops in and uh we finished trine yes monday two weeks ago we said we were gonna do it and we did it our seven-year adventure comes to an end in the most lgc way possible of 
We're just going to keep playing until we're done. How long did that take? You might wonder. It was like three, three hours. hours. Yeah. Oh man. That that is six hundred sixty six gigs. That's- it was. Like I had to screenshot that immediately during the live stream and post it, so that uh, no accusations of um, gimp shooping anything. Yep. Yep. That file was six hundred sixty six gigabytes. The uh, recorded version, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a- dead. Frozen bite. Please don't make try and five. I'm begging you. We're done with it. We, we've completed it. It was a Patreon goal, and uh, we may finally made good on it. So we can yeah. hold on install try, and it's no longer just sitting there. I, I took some joy in removing that out of my library. Oh, I, I completely forgot to do that. I'm going to go do that. <laughs> re- oh, I don't have Steam open. Never mind. Yeah. And uh, something I brought up, I, I promise this is going to be the last gaming-related thing. I, I played Devil May Cry 4 for the first time yesterday because I had 999 in my Steam wallet from a refund and you'll never guess how much devil may cry for cost during the, uh, steam summer sale, winter sale. Nine forty nine, 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 nine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's, it, they always leave you with like some useless amount in your <laughs> wallet still left over. Like, yeah, you, uh, you have three steam dollars left. Good luck. Go, and let's go be buy perfectly something. honest. Steam knows as well as you do that. That number irritates you and you want to get rid yeah. of it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Like, why is that up there? So I bought that. Uh, the only comment I'll say, I, I enjoyed the DMC, the uh, reimagining. I think that was, that was five? I no, no, say. no. This is one before five. This is one okay. that came out that right. okay, okay. Like, hardcore yeah. fans hated. And right. The, with uh, this, this one had uh, not, not Virgil, the, the third guy, Nero. I no, no, no. The, the, all right. DMC four. This is the. My only comment on this is it it is a digital war crime when it comes to the camera positioning because it does the standard old school Japanese fixed camera positioning that you'll see in a lot of games like Castlevania. And uh, that you can live with it. You adapt to it later on where it doesn't bug you or like Resident Evil, right? Where it's like, boom, you're just locked in. You got to run around this. DMC4 commits the crime of doing that sometimes. While other times, without giving you any context clues, it's free, free look with a camera. So that just drove me up the wall for no reason. But you know what? I can say I've played DMC4 and it's a thing. Got it. Now, let's get on to Italian court cases because. Mm, Well, not Nintendo. Not not, not Mario related. Nope, not Mario related, man. Jeez. Jeez. (laughs) Italian court finds open source software terms enforceable. That's good news, everyone. Uh, the judge has ordered them to uh, remove offending code, which is also good. This is uh, all of this is going to be in our show notes. You can go through the whole thing, but basically, let's see if I got this right, Jordan. I'm going to try to throw this down because uh, we were discussing, we were trying to find exactly what the license originally was as GPL something question mark. Yeah. For this particular piece, but mm-hmm. there was a widget module for a plugin. That, which is also a WordPress plugin that this company developed. And apparently some people from the core team like went off and did their own thing and they reused some of the code. And this company came back and they, you know, they sent the, uh, you know, a friendly termination notice, which mm-hmm. is in the GPL. I'm like, Hey, stop using this. Or if you're going to continue using it, you need to provide what changes you've done, made that available. And they went, nah, ah. So, you know, they, the judge ordered that, hey, GPL is enforceable, man. Uh, they set a fine for it at the expense of uh, the infringer. So they got to pay for the 100 euros for each day in the delay of not complying and complying, which means they have to comply with, they have to list the changes, make everything available. Uh, 15 days for 100 euro a day fine. Then it goes up to 300 euros a day uh, after the 15th day after notification. So good. Yeah. It's it's good it's good to see that like when it comes to actually enforcing copyleft, the courts recognize that you know it is it is an agreement that you agreed to. Um, a lot of a lot of companies are taking the uh, the stance that like oh we don't actually have to obey the GPL or the BSD license or the Apache license because like it's free software. Who cares? We I can visio. just use it. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> Exactly. Um, but like th- it goes both way. It was like, that's kind of how all contract enforcement works. It's all the fiction of the contract. And you can, you can't say like, well, we agree to this one, but not this other one because contracts aren't real. You guys. Ah. Um, and like, 
I, I don't know. The, the, this seems to not so much smack of like GPL malicious GPL abuse and more of like people taking their code and being like, yo, this is our code. And the other people being, well, you still, it's still licensed under this license. So you got to make do no. All right. Then I guess we're going to sue you. And they did hundred percent with that, man. No, I, I, I'm glad this was enforced and they got to do the right thing. We, if anybody out there is a better sleuth than us, if you can find out the dynamic dot where their source code repository, if they even have that listed or what, what it's licensed under, because Jordan, you went looking as well and we couldn't really come up. Yeah. With yeah. Cause like WordPress is GPL two. Mm-hmm. Um, the plugin well, was well, GPL three. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Um, Elementor is GPL3, mm-hmm. and this is a company that makes uh, widgets for Elementor. So, ostensibly GPL3, if it's linking with the GPL3, pro- I, I, don't, I don't know. And it, don't it, know. It, it might be... And it might be one of those things, too, where, like, you buy the software and then you can say, bro, give me a floppy disk with the source code on it and they will send you one. Right? Oh, man, like, they're going to send you, like, one of those eight and a quarter inch floppies. I'm like, technically oh, yeah, complying. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's like uh like the ProtonMail guys. They're just like, yeah, here's our database in text uh, oh. in, like, 11 point font. Yeah. Dude. Uh, uh, if anybody knows about that or maybe they're watching, I'm like, hey, I'm just curious how we, you know, if I purchase it, what Jordan says, do we get a copy? Which is not completely uncommon but uh yeah just wondering about that i want to let everyone know about this though the lost talks from one linus torvalds in 1994 man we are talking about this is by mad dog jeez yeah john hall yeah john mad dog hall he's still is he is he dead i don't don't know he this was his uh release uh tell tell me about mad dog while i set up the audio which i forgot to do (laughs) Matt, Matt, Mad Dog is a very, very old graybeard who is incredibly accomplished. I'm not going to even try to uh, list his accomplishments because I don't know them offhand. I just know the name because he's been so involved and embedded in the Linux and open source community. Um, yeah, and apparently he recorded uh, Linus uh, way back when he was 24 years old, given this, uh, given this talk. Um <laughs> an introduction to Linux and implementations in Linux, which is a problem that has still not been solved 20 years later. No, people still don't know how to get software running under Linux. All right. You're, <laughs> you're not going to hear it, but hang on. Let me give everyone a little sample of, um, all right. All right. I'm, I'm a hush. Good. So if, if you have lots of memory, I want Linux to take advantage of advantage on it. It's, it's listenable. If you can get over the constant, uh, hum going on in the background and uh just the overall bad audio quality so i'm gonna take a stab at getting this fixed up uh you gotta think man how old was lennox in 1994 three yeah or yeah like as, as, as like a project yeah uh, and I was, I was gonna say like i imagine this was like one of those pocket recorders that like mad dog had in his uh, briefcase yeah well he yeah. said he dug around and like even to like re-digitize this. And I was listening to him like, I, I think I can fix a lot of this. I'm going to have to get mm-hmm. in and like, I thought, all right, honestly, I thought I was going to be like one past this. And like me, and I was like, no, we're going to have to do some surgical work, especially on the first part where the tape speed is off, where that's going mm-hmm. to have to be restretched because the, the perils of physical media over a long term. Right? Yeah, man. It's like the motor slowed down. Apparently only 40 people showed up to the, an introduction to Linux. So, uh, it, it it's just, and, a very, and the community has not grown since it's mm-hmm. still 40 people, 46, uh, listening to like a nervous 24 year, four year old Linus is just very, I mean, it was, has no business being as entertaining as it is. And it's good to see where he starts off, even from like, this is a foolish project. And it was like, it was very hard to have the person who designed Minix tell me it's a fool's errand. You'd be dumb to try to write your own operating system without a micro kernel. And yeah, good times. Are you into like history stuff like this? I mean, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. uh, I was actually waiting for you to uh, finish the audio cleanup before I was going to give it a listen. All right. Uh, yeah, but, I, uh, I mean, no, that, that, I, I'm going to probably wait always... to like four or five minutes in before the drop. Mm. Probably going for like a house techno. Yeah, just uh, remix. Just have have someone scream remix, <laughs> and yeah. Of course, you, the, the trick is to wait to 13 minutes in before you pull that nonsense off. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, just when just when it starts getting really interesting. No, it's 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 always it's always crazy to like go back and like listen to some of these talks and be like and see where we came from. And it's cool that this is available. Like if this was a lost talk, like I'm sure like, yeah, 40 people saw this and have vague recollections of what actually happened. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see, like, to show, to show this recording to someone who was actually there and be like, wait, didn't like Macho Man Randy Savage show up midway through and body slam Linus. I clearly remember that. I, I guess it didn't happen. Oh man. So sticking with the audio train, there's a new version of audacity. Everyone's favorite. Uh, I don't know. Not favorite. Have they done anything dumb this month? It's been a couple of months since they've uh, done anything crazy. Try, try to try to fork their code to something else. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> keep an eye out for that. But it's a patch release. A couple of things in this. Uh, the big one that I want to bring out is they finally got the app image set up on Debian to where it can find FF impact which is kind of important for basically every single thing I do. A couple other things in here. Uh, they've added shortcuts for looping. Well, they've updated them, and it's Control-L, you know, nice. Well, Shift-L, sorry. Uh, and Shift-Alt-L, which makes so much sense. And uh, some things are a little bit faster. Maybe. A, a, a little bit. Suppo- supposedly, uh, load times for uh, projects are about 50 times faster. Mm-hmm. That's always nice. They did fix one bug, 2103, which seems kind of critical. Uh, let me, let me pull, fixed looping some playing sometimes the wrong audio. That seems kind of, that seems kind of critical, right? Possibly. If you're, if you're going to loop an audio and it doesn't play the right, it doesn't loop the correct audio. I don't, I don't know, know, man. I mean, I, it could lead to more creative. Um, maybe albums have been designed around that. Yeah. Happy oh, no, little no. Accident. See, see, this, this is the line of stub step, re, step remix, right? Like we just, we use the, the pre-release version that doesn't have that patch in there. Okay. And then just like, yeah, shuffle time, shuffle time, baby. I don't want to make Linus cry. I'll probably just clean it up and make it listenable. But uh, yeah, Audacity. Is, wasn't that a Prince song when Linus cries? Yeah, it will be. When penguins cry. <laughs> um, I use Audacity sparingly, uh, but, and what is the other one? Tenacity was the uh, fork. Yeah. Tenacity is the the fork that doesn't is supposed to not have any of the licensing crap that the Audacity is trying to pull. Yeah, the, the current owners of the Audacity project. Now, to their credit, the Audacity team, you know, previously they've added non destructive editing to Audacity, which is something that people have been wanting for well over a decade because it's considered a very basic feature these days, and that was always met with no, we don't need that. So that's finally on Audacity, but. Yeah, grab the app image if you're on Debian-based system. It works out of the box with everything that you get set up. I've used it, played around with it, so it is there. And uh, this next thing, I think, is above both of our pay grades, but you selected it, so go for it. Tell us all about it. Yeah, no, we're, we're... We're, we're, we're going from uh, digital audio editing to digital image editing now. Uh, Krita has a new release out. It's 5.0. Maybe you don't want to use GIMP or GLIMPS or that. Uh, this is I think, the other popular like Photoshop Illustrator alternative that is available under Linux. And uh, it has some new features. Uh, complete rewrite of the gradients, brushes, palette system. Um, the gradients themselves have been improved. The smudge brush engine has been completely rewritten. Finally. Uh, there's sto- yeah, there's a storyboard editor now, which I think is neat for yeah, like there's animation film stuff in this now. I didn't know you yeah. could do animation in Krita. Yeah, that, 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 that's neat. Um, that's, that's very neat. And also they added the ability to record your sessions in app. So if you want to like do a time lapse of your drawing or whatever, you can just do that in right in Krita and it will spit out like a MKV or whatever. Keyframe, clone flag. Oh, oh man. All right. Storyboarding. No, see, I don't need to be around storyboarding. Look at that. Yeah, oh, damn. that's yeah. neat. This is a bunch of stuff that I would never learn unless, like, I was forced to. Um, yeah, like if, if I were getting into digital art, yeah, definitely start looking at uh, Krita as a tool. But they got five dot out. Uh, one thing: if you are on uh, the Firefoxes and you're trying to download their app image, uh, or if your name is Linus Tech Tips. Uh, you're going to have a problem downloading their uh, their app image. You're going to have to right-click and save as. You can't just click on the link. Oh, by the way, they're not making 32 bits Windows built. Is that what it's called? Is it 32 bits Windows? I've, I've, heard, I've heard it referred to that. I think that's like a, that's a non-native English speaker thing. Uh, 64 bits, portable bits. and I, I mean, like, gr- grammatically, it makes more sense, right? Like, it's not the 64 singular bit. 
No, it's 64 bits. You don't tell me how to bet, man. Listen, bit, bit please. Okay. Android, source code, all the fun stuff is there. Uh, 100% over my pay grade, but I love looking at stuff like this. And, you know, Krita is just, it's like that equivalent, man, because, you, you know, you got Blender, which will just trade blows with any professional 3D modeling software that's out there these days. And um, I think Krita is really really made progress as far as like desktop publishing, as far as, uh, yeah. And any sort of digital art stuff. Yeah. Analytics. Yeah. I, I definitely, if, I, if people were like transitioning over from windows, I would definitely tell them to look at Krita. Like even, even just like in general as a, as a Photoshop replacement period. Mm-hmm. Um, so, ah, uh, this, for, this is, this next one is for advanced Linux users who, uh, maybe are defeated by dependency hell. Just, uh, just, just a little bit. Uh, this is from Tom Dewar on GitHub. You can find links to this in our show note and it's called fix. Uh, and it is, uh, it is a little Python program that, uh, attempts to use machine learning to find out what is wrong with the command that you just ran. So they, they give you a little example here about like making a directory, trying to run some thing with the black framework or whatever. And you can, if you can fix or you can, you can prefix the last command or do fix bang bang, and it'll give you some suggestions to maybe fix it up. It'll try to identify like missing Python packages or system packages and make uh, recommendations. Thusly, I guess it's kind of handy if you're bad at tracking down missing dependencies and can't read like stack. Uh, stack traces. Um, ah, see, like, I, I don't know this. I am not in the market for any of this stuff, but I can definitely see for as a tool for getting people used to command line, uh, to, uh, some, something like this that will like actually read what you're typing in and give you some sort of practical example based on that to be kind of beneficial. Um, but then you're, you're saying, did you, did you play around with it at all? I didn't. I, I, didn't I looked it at up. it. Full disclosure. Uh, my solution to this is my aliasing for finger flubbing is comical like that, <laughs> because too many times I'll look back. And I'm like, come on. That was only one letter off. That's always what I've been looking for. This is kind of interesting, though, for me. Um, AI assisted command line flub fixer, which I mean, this thing is using open open AI as a codex API which I mean, you do have to go and set up like a little account for it, which it's not going to cost you anything, but in its current state, it generates mostly wrong solutions right now. I know it's a hard selling point, but some of the generated solutions are kind of useful. I mean, it's in it the early stages, but it's in the ballpark. Yeah, you, you, you can gotta, tell you got to train it up, right? right? Like, yeah, you, you're looking at it and it's giving you the results. It's like, you're almost there a little buddy. And, um, and, uh, the F, uh, it's another program very similar to this, more well known. Um, but the the F delete expletive it, it uses strong syntax, but fix it's probably a lot better in the semantic aspect. It, it, it to what yeah. Jordan's new users, I'm like, oh, maybe this, and I'm like, oh, yes, this is the packages you're looking for, and do that. And yeah. I think there's even a YOLO mode for it. Where you can, <laughs> where, where it'll just run it automatically. Yeah. Like, oh man, <laughs> I, I hope you're running an immutable OS. This is what this is real handy for Fedora Silverblue. <laughs> oh boy, oh that, oh oh man, that, <laughs> that, that that's that's called limiting your blast radius, man. <laughs> that that that's a video, man, to see how how, how many uh, w- which you can get done with that before it just completely rec- recognizes everything, but. This is not an immutable system, but it's doing something very interesting with a file system. And uh, we both think it's particularly neat. Yeah, you may have looked at the Linux file tree and gone like, well, what the heck is this opt or bin or var or local or boot or what? what? The, 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 Unix, the Unix file system has uh, some idiosyncrasies and they're there for a reason. Once upon a time, your operating system came on tapes storage was at a premium and you needed to partition stuff out. Um, sometimes uh, software would come from different sources and you needed to make sure that things wouldn't interfere with uh, each other. So that's why you have bin, S bin, opt, user local bin, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, It's a very old way of doing things. And I think um, a lot of the, uh, it's, it's persisted in the same way that QWERTY has persisted, right? 
people are used to it, and so there's no reason to change. Uh, but Gobbo Linux has uh, taken a different approach. Instead, everything is under programs and is versioned accordingly. So you'd have like programs slash version slash Firefox slash version or program slash version versions slash versions NVIDIA drivers. Right yeah, screen, and you, and you, you, you know. could, yeah, it, it allows you to have multiple versions um, like concurrently. Uh, and you, you need to do a lot of, uh, you need to do a lot of work with like LD library paths and setting up the environment, but absolutely Linux does not care where you stick your files as long mm. as you tell it where it needs to look for like your core libraries and stuff. Um, yeah, it, it absolutely works. And I, I think stuff like that is good to sort of challenge the more core notions of what Linux is because like, fu- like file systems kind of don't work for the way people organize files anymore. It's right. Like mo- more often when you're looking for a specific file, you'll use like a search feature or you'll use something to like graphically list out the files and then like sort through them via like date or name or something. At least that's, that's how I do it for the most part. I don't really like the, the, the file f- structure metaphor only works up into a point. And you see like Apple's doing it too with their tagged file system oh, yeah. uh, as well. Yeah. Like, um, so stuff stuff like this, trying to innovate in that space is always really, really cool. You know, I, I was taking a look at this and, you know, installing each package into its own directory and maintaining some links. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Is there a performance hit? Probably shrug emoji. Like if you were ne- trying to find something right. And, yeah. you know, yeah, this does work uh, kind of like uh, the Nix OS uh, FS, FHS uh, user environments. Mm. So that's the same thing, but I mean, this Gobo Linux has been around since forever and uh, I'd never really looked into it. And I finally just went to the about thing. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of a neat idea. I like, um, it's kind of like, uh, flat packs. Yeah. A, a, a little bit with like, um, shared resourcing pools. I, th- I think flat back or flat packs are a little more like robust, the solution because this, this requires a lot of like environment manipulation and you need to, ma- you need to make sure that when specific programs start up, they're looking in the correct, uh, they're looking in the correct directories and that the correct, like some links are present. Mm-hmm. Um, doing, doing like file system overlays, which is what uh, flat pack does. I, th- I think is a little more graceful a solution, but if you don't want containerization, something like this would absolutely work in a pinch. And That's again, and I mean, especially yeah. with like file system overlays, we can kind of just do anything we want at this point. We don't have to worry about things being in perfect order in order for, you know, a system of like recovery disk it, and stuff like that. It, 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 exactly. And a, a, a lot of these paradigms, they were, they, again, they're, they're really meant for like systems that shipped on tapes. They mm-hmm. don't, they don't really have the same level of utility anymore. Like Fedora, Fedora mo- merged uh, user lib and uh, lib and bin and user bin all together into uh, one, uh, into one folder, like, Back in Fedora 30, I want to say, and and they, they just they just have like a symlink to slash bin and slash lib and slash lib 64 uh, that just points to the same thing. Uh, and to to simplify it, right? Hmm. Uh, what so do you think? I, okay, what are your thoughts on yeah. like the uh, system dot home thing? <sighs> like just just like uh, system D handling the home dirs? For <sighs> there's. There, there's definitely there's definitely a pro to it in terms of like act- having like actual like robust management for like transient home directories because mm-hmm. uh, it like traditionally if you set it up with something like NFS and like using LDAP to mount like home directories for like per user basis like that that does not work super well but also like you know having just a, a location on the file system where the SSH keys are. Here's I all mean, I want. But, but, but I, I don't know. It, it, it's complicated because you could always architect the system to not run into this issue. Mm-hmm. I, I, <sighs> okay. I don't, I don't have 15 minutes worth of soundbite for it. Right. Here, here's, here's my example for it though. Uh, there, there's something to this day that still bugs me. We do a gaming show on Saturday. More often yep. than not, if it's a unity title or something like that, we got to go hunt down a config file. Now, do you yep. want to play the Russian roulette? Is it in dot config or is it under share local? Mm. Or did they just drop it directly in your home directory? U- Unity Unity is pretty consistent, but th- that's always under uh, config it, Unity 3D. Yes, but then then hang on. Okay, yeah, yeah under the developer's name, not yes. the game's name. Yeah, well, yeah. Th- th- then there's the process of okay, let's go to the Steam page and figure out who the <laughs> publisher is or the developer is, and then do the the fifty fifty <sighs> on which one. Yeah, like that that that's a pain in the butt. That one. That that is Unity's fault. That is not a Linux problem. That is a Unity problem. Let us let us 
100% point the finger at the I, appropriate party. I, I would love some type of like forced standard. I know, remove choice, but standardization for all config files. In, I mean, that, that's what XGG home is supposed to be, right? Like, it doesn't work like that, no. I mean, it does, like, yeah, it, it, of course things don't work when people don't use them. Right. And, remove that, options, uh, Jordan. We need to clamp down on these hippies. I've, yeah. Settle, settle down, Tim Cook. Settle uh-huh. down. Come on, here's the money. Uh, uh, so uh, why why can't you be real, Tim Cook? Why can't you just be fake straw man, Tim Cook? <laughs> Speaking of money, hey, if you like what we do, you want to support us, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we do this nonsense. Uh, we got a couple of things on our web zone as well, linuxgamecast.com. We got Amazon Wish Zones. Jordan's got one. That's where he keeps his sword collection. You pick him up something. We do a horrible idea. We got a little thing that we can read out. Some people take advantage of it. Some people don't. That's cool. Got a board back here. If you pick up anything from the studio, we do thank you for your time as a patron. You get a couple of bonus sodas. We got an extra. If you like this, this is just the middle part, the live stream. We record the pre-show and we record the post-show. So you end up about an hour, two hours of extra content each and every week. We do the same thing on Saturdays where we even have a production meeting, the pre pre super shows and in podcast and video format available for you as a custom RSS feed access to our discord, also, if you want to come pop in our Discord, if you sub to us on Twitch, that's also an option. And that'll let you do things like come race with us on um, Friday. Friday. Also, we got IRC, Twitch, and Discord all tied in together. So if you want to pop into our IRC, feel free to communicate with each and every person here in our live channel. That's at your own risk. And, you know, if you get into IRC, I think you know what you're doing. That's your own risk. I mean, okay, here's my thought on IRC. It does irritate me when projects don't have a Discord. I don't care what your thoughts are on Discord. That's where people are at. You know, that's where people are going to pop into. I understand the benefits of only having the IRC because you know how much that filters out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? I've got to learn how to do an IRC. Yeah, people have to figure out how to connect to which honestly is like you go you go to like Leaf Chat or whatever, or mm-hmm. Kiwi Chat, that's the browser one. And yeah, it's 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 really easy to do, but look look Googling getting getting the what the hell is Kwanzaa, what the hell is IRC pamphlet. That that is gonna yeah. filter out a lot of like just very simple questions. Cause you know, I see the opposite in the OBS Discord of like how thing broke burn question mark. Followed by like screaming. Anyway, thanks for your support. Um, what do we have? Oh, right. We got a merch store. We got clothes. Cover yourselves and mine and Jordan's faces all over your body. Just yes. not in sticker format. We do have to get into a slice of pie this week. Mm, pizza. Mm. Pizza pie. I don't know, man. Like, I, I'd be impressed that somebody took the time to cut it like that, but I'd be, you've ruined a, well, you know, one, two, well, three, like, three. like, Okay. Okay. This it all depends on what parts of the pizza you get. Because if they, right, yeah, like, like, well, one, two, three, four, five, five people, five people are getting a decent slice of pizza. Everyone else is getting really greasy hands. They're getting cheese plate. Like they don't even get yeah. crust. What's the point of pizza if you don't have no crust, man? Like that's that's we get we gotta ask Stan. That, that's that's who we gotta go. Stan. To. Yeah, Stan. Stan. Uh, PDM to USB. Yeah, um, so I had to learn what a uh, pulse density microphone was to understand what the hell is going on. Uh, but the short story is, this is from Electronaut.in, and it's about the Myco project. It is a, uh, so the, the origin story here is a guy was playing around with some machine learning on his uh, RP2040 microcontroller. Uh, does not, did not like the, um, did not like the quality of the cheap USB mic he got. And so he said, to hell with it. I'll make my own. And he did. Uh, so they put together one uh, with a RP2040 and a pulse density microphone, and it can um, clip in via USB. The The entire thing is open source. There's the 3D printer circuit board schematic. Uh, you can get the microprocessor and, you know, get get away with the cheap microphone. It is Pretty super neat. cheap, man. I'm just looking around. I'm, to this day, even in these trying times, you can get the 2040 part uh, by, you know, buck a piece. If you're not mm-hmm. getting them in volume, that's what I was curious about. And the um, microphone's like two bucks. So then you got a PCB, USB. You can probably get 10 or 15 of these things printed for 20 bucks. So yeah, and just populate it yourself, which is easy to do. Have you ever done any surface mount soldering? Nope. Would you like to? I'm, no, I'd, I'm too clumsy. I would just burn a bunch of holes through silicon. I, I would pay to watch. 
I mean, yeah, it would make it for an entertaining live stream, but that you could say that about a lot of things. Well, that I don't know. I mean, you, you don't need a soldering iron. I'm just going to give you a nozzle that blows out air and some tweezers. Okay. Like a, just a hairdryer? Kind of, yeah. I mean, it might right. take some skid off, but same principle. Same All principle. Right. Volume. Volume. Oh, man, that would just, that, uh, it would take some hair <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, budget, B- Ven Stone's hair removal service. Oh, Oh, that, that's a, <laughs> the Ben Stallone. Oh, bad crispy. <laughs> Excellent project. I like seeing stuff like that. And uh, there's some voice samples on there. Where, okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. There's a link to the web page on, his, on the site where he's documented to the YouTube video. You listen to the YouTube video, you're like, huh? Then you read the comment in that YouTube video where he's like, oops, I selected the wrong input. So he gives you a link to the right video in that YouTube video. I'm like, couldn't you just update the link on your homepage with that? Maybe. No. Also, the second video is, it's a 15 second video with 12 seconds of like waiting for the mouse to get over the, to play. <laughs> don't you, don't you love that? And well, it's, it's, it's not like you can have the cursor over on record and then you got to like, but. Oh, it, you're just, I mean, that's the, the suspense payoff ratio. I'm like, huh? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I was like, hello, how are you? And then video ends. Ah, uh, yes. Anyway, cool project, man. Uh, keep up the fantastic work. Now, tell me a story. <laughs> you know what? We're going to have to summarize this story. I've been sitting on this one for a couple of weeks because, you know, I, it, 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 we're going to have to, we're not going to unpack the entire thing. We're going to give you just the gist of it. If you would like to uh, give us your gist, uh, you can head over to linuxgamecast.com, tap the contact button. Read the instructions. If you don't want to read the instructions, what I've just fill out some things, smash that send button fam. And, uh, we'll probably get back to you. And we might even talk about what you send us on this very show. Like Smith distro watch. Talking about distro watch. I got a lot of love for distro watch because when we first started this thing, me and Jordan, all those years ago, first place I ever saw that had listed our podcast, what passed for a podcast, which was like 30 minutes of trying to have a coherent like chat conversation. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, distro, which is first, we just pop it up, put it on their site. Now, okay. These guys are doing a Linuxy thing. And so, I, I mean, this, this was back in the day when there was like five Linux podcasts mm-hmm. and we, we were number five. It was a different time. Children get off our lawns. Um, yeah, because in my headspace, we're still new. It, it, it does not feel like it's been ten years now. No, it still feels like we're, it's the little thing we're playing around doing, which yeah. I, which I, like intellectually I understand. People look at our shows as like the old guard, the legacy. Like, ah, oh, you've been around the whole. I'm like, no. I remember buying a headset and like, hey, let's let's see how this podcast thing works. Anyway, Smith has an issue with Distro Watch. Now, here, let me, let me just give you a taste. How long this goes on. And just, there, there's some scrolling yeah yeah anyway we'll we'll just we'll, we'll, maybe we'll cut into this first part jordan so <gasps> okay do you want to take it or you want me to get the first one i i i i i will, I will take this all right hi i was observing page hit rankings the list on the right side of distro watch and noticed something quote unquote funny the final proof that you think either it really some sounds distros, like that i'm i'm gonna pretend he sounds like that sweet that either some distros pay, quote unquote, distro watch to put them on top, or there's some secret sauce and some people know how to screw with it. Yesterday, the watch order Major, of- I'm, I'm, I'm going to screw with it. I'm going to select a different year. Oh, no. Hacks. Stop. Stop screwing with it. Screw is a dirty word, according to Jill. It's okay. not allowed. All right. I, I'm uh, going to nail it. All right. Oh, it's even dirtier. Oh, oh tee hee hee. Uh, sorry, continuing on. Jesus. Yesterday, the order of distros was completely different. First, years ago, Mint was always on top. Judging by the revealed donations, unlike secret donations of elementary, probably Miss and Miss, probably Miss and oh, Microsoft and Manjaro. Yeah. Who knows? Oh, God, we're going deep. Dude. It was, it was still should be on top. Then suddenly Manjaro, for unknown reason, out of the blue, dun, dun, dun. Get, gets on top, which was way too suspicious. This guy really likes his parentheses, doesn't he? <laughs> Yesterday, number one was Endeavor. Less than 24 hours, it was corrected. Like some oh, someone applied a secret sauce. So, 
just to be on top, but not too much to raise suspicion. And MX came on top. MX is kind of a mess as a dis. Okay, I've I've yeah. I've lost the. All right. Yeah, I, I've I've kind of checked out. All right, this is. I don't, uh, does this guy have some bodies hidden? Do we need to like work? Do we need to call the police? Is this like actually a secret manifesto of like? Okay, this, all right. Seriously, a this is just entertain. This is just blatant. Uh, I'm no apologies entertainment for everyone at home because I mean this starts off on. Anyone under the age of 30 has no idea what DistroWatch is. And anyone over the age of 30, we know exactly how DistroWatch works. It tells you right there on the front pages, like, who downloads the most. Why The reason I bring that up is because everyone always says after someone brings up DistroWatch, it's not an accurate way to gauge popularity of Linux distros. And, like... Uh, honestly, who cares about Distro DistroWatch anymore? Like again, it's it 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 was a great website back in the day, uh, but like I, I I don't know the 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 location of the discussion of Linux and distributions is kind of in 20, moved on. 20, 2021, DistroWatch is where you go to find retro Linux distributions. I mean, oh yeah, to 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 be like, oh yeah, I know absolutely that joke. Distro did exist. I remember seeing it on a forum post that one time. Yeah. So let's see what what is the top today uh, trending in the past seven days or most rating? You want to do average ratings, oh, I, most I, ratings, or trending? I I, I want to see first added. First, I, 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 I want I want to see if there's like still stuff that's around. Two thousand and two. Nope. Nope. Hang on, first one. Yep. Nope. Man, Mandrake, Mandrake Red gone. Hat, Sorcerer, Licorice, Lindos, Xandros, Vine, Root, Vine. Crux. Beehive? Beehive. Oh, Beehive. Turbo oh, beehive. Linux. Linux Limpus. from scratch. Oh, come on. We didn't get Linux. Nopix. Red flag. Arch. Hey. Arch. Arch, baby. 2002. Represent. Yeah. yeah still, beat, still beating out Yellow Dog, baby. Go to Hell Power PC. <laughs> what Oaks? Kha'Zix. K12 LT. Wow. Blue. I, I I don't even I don't even know any of these at I, this point, man. R.I.P. Laser Five. Lasers. <laughs> laser Five. <laughs> no, well, I I mean now now we're on like Laser Sixteen. Clearly. Right. Uh, everything was rubbish after Laser Six jammed. Right. I like jammed. Linuxin. Oh man, I got to the, I got back from the doctor. I got a terminal case of Linuxin. Ah, uh, Winby Atomic Chinese Chi- 2000. Chinese Two Thousand Dead Place Arc. D- UOS TFM last update 2019 it's still around oh, it's been oh, discontinued man, that, in 2019 Ah, we were so close okay. all right so i mean all right the, well, well distro- that, that, that was an adventure yeah, yep. here, th- this is why i was having a good time reading through this email uh there'll be a link if you want to go through the whole manifesto is because people use distro watch for what we were just doing yeah yeah that that's purpose. funny, funny, ha ha times. Yeah. N- no one shows up there for hard hitting rankings, numerics. So whatever the ranking thing is over on the side, like that's our, might as well be RNG. I'm sure it works on something better than RNG, uh, but even if it does, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we could, we could do like, like a weekly lottery and get like busted by the SEC. Right. <laughs> do, do do it, do it over under on top Linux downloads of the week. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you got some better, uh, like in-depth conspiracy theories relating to distro watch or anything else. Uh, send them our way. We'd love to read through. It'll be fun. I, I, I still don't think this one beats the having a proprietary blob on your computer that only Linus Torvalds has access to I that really, one. That one, that one was top tier. I was disappointed. I posted that on Twitter and yeah. you, you nutters on the follow me on Twitter. Like, I, cause I posted like, ah, that's funny. Somebody probably made it up. Uh, uh-uh. uh, you, you, you kids got to researching and like later a link show like here it is like, oh no I, and it wasn't sudden just that's terrifying yeah just like this show hey we gotta bounce out of here thanks for showing up thanks again to one Jordan's Fang you can check him out on his very own Twitch channel when he's not here doing crazy stuff like on Thursdays you're still playing the uh, Cybertrucks yeah I'm gonna keep on with it um, have you tried oh, you have know, you tried FSR th- no, I keep forgetting to do it. I'll remind but you. But maybe, maybe, maybe I will remember. I'll right. remind you Saturday. All right. Fuzzer. And uh, Fuzz it. twitch.tv forward slash the burning fool. Yes. Which no, is uh, just, just 
burning cool. Ah, see, it's easy to remember. Ah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Mm. I got gotcha. you. Or <laughs> on Twitter at at the burning fool. The yes. burning fool. Or Look, you can you, find you, you it know, in Discord you, you, as at Fro- Frojo. At Frojo. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Or as Mastodon Who am I again? at Gary. No, it's not. I mean, you 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 could you could ask at Gary questions. I'm sure, sure I'll I at Gary will answer <laughs> at Gary, them. As at, at Gary. <laughs> That's gonna be a thing. Uh, we'll see you next week, everyone. Uh, um, hopefully, everything will be recovered and. Uh, We'll have the holiday New Year. It'll be, oh man, that's going to be the 2022. We'll see you in 2022. Ah. Inaugural 2022 LWDW. Ah, it's me. Hey, you. Yeah, FSR, the only thing I've played around with in FSR has been um, uh, Horizon Ginger Turbo, and that is busted. Is everything shimmery in the plants have RGBs? Uh. That's right. All of our gorgeous people in the credits because we put you in the credits because I know what it's like. Hey, look, there's the name on the internet thing. I know those feels. I, did I wanted it. to share. I'm, I'm credits. I am credits. The I end. am credits. All right. Uh, wait, I am credits. So that's going to be. Will Smith, starring yeah. Will Smith, directed by uh, M. Night. The dog. Oh. <laughs> dog. Yeah, the dog from the movie. I was not attached to that dog enough. It's like, well, we're down a dog. We'll see you next week. All right, bye-bye.